Hey, Instagram, guess what? It's Tuesday, which you know what that means, Tuesday Tips Live. Tuesday Tips Live, and it's October, which means that we are talking about teamwork. We are talking about teamwork here on Instagram Live. And today we have a very special guest, our special guest to chat with us today. Hey, Alex, hey, Aurora, is Aurora Toshiko King, and Aurora is the executive director at Free Spirit Media, a nonprofit. I will say in full disclosure, I am on the board of directors for this not-for-profit, Free Spirit Media. Um, it focuses on North Lawndale and um, transforming media, raising youth voices. It's an amazing organization, and we are um, going to be talking about change, and we are going to be talking about leading teams through change. And I'm still be able to tell us more about that, which is a very exciting thing. So Aurora is going to be coming on here shortly. And there Hi. she is. Hello. Hello, Aurora. How are you today? I am doing great. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so excited to be talking to you about, about just teamwork in general. I'm very excited to be talking with you and to continue the conversation that, um, that we're always having about this. <laughs> I know. I know. I gave the, I gave the spoiler alert that we are, we're always talking about this, but usually in more specific terms. Yes. Now we get to talk about it like theoretically mm. based on what we see in action, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. So um, before we before we get going, I just want to say if at any point people have questions, if people want to chime in, you know, add things into the comments. Also, if you're watching this and you're watching it when it's not live, that's still OK, because Aurora and I are on Instagram and we can come back to your questions and um, and, and, and your feedback and your comments and refer to them later and and reply to them later as well. So. Okay. Hi, Jill. Well, let's... Sorry. <laughs> oh, Jill's on. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Feel free to when you see people coming on, wave at them, say <laughs> hey. Um, Jill, if you have any questions, you know, it sounds like you know Aurora. Just, just go for it. Hard hitting questions make her sweat. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so Aurora, you've been with our organization now for. Four almost, almost six, I think. Four, is five it to almost six? six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, time is flying. Well, and you walked into an organization that was going through change, mm -hmm. right? And it's layered because an organization going through change in a world that's also going through change. So what, what are the challenges that you've been facing leading teams through change? Well, it has been, um, I would say challenges, but I would also say um, opportunities for personal growth <laughs> and really a process of building. Um, so building trust, first and foremost. Um, I think it's what, like, every, the foundation of everything um, when it comes to working with people um, in any context. So really building trust. Um, building a sense of, you know, what are my personal values? How does that connect to the collective? Um, and also moving at the speed of trust, which is a phrase um, that Adrian Marie Brown says um, and that I think of every day, which is, you know, slow down, uh, be intentional, and really move at the speed that the group, the pace that the, that the group is moving at. Um, and so that I feel like has been really core um, to my journey at Free Spirit Media has been really about learning and listening. Um, when I am learning and with my colleagues, I know that something's going right. Um, the minute I stop learning, probably that's happening for other people. Um, so I've really leaned in on my skills um, and always building my skills in facilitation um, in community building to just be present and do a lot of listening um, and do a lot of like, okay, we're gonna spend half a day um, in retreat, connecting with each other. The relationship building, the laughter, the fun is 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 really critical. And then taking that to okay, what is our shared vision? We're gonna chip away at this one thing, you know. What's our vision for communications? How do we? What's our next step? You know. So really trying to scaffold it um, to get, use an education term in a way that um, that allows also for all people in the circle to be able to share in whatever ways that they feel comfortable. Um, and so trying to like, you know, 
create different formations and opportunities for that. Um, use art, because as we're all artists, as a way to kind of cultivate um, that, that trust and that grounding in our, our shared values. So it's been yeah. fun. It's been great. It's an amazing group. So yeah. It is an amazing group. We're yeah, it's it, it's a very lucky group. Um, and 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 it's and I wouldn't even say it's luck. It's it's because people come to it with a sense of purpose, and they come to it with a sense of values. Mm -hmm. So there is a there there is a sacredness about the work mm -hmm. that when people realize, wow, we want to deepen how we're doing our work, then the time is taken, right? And. I think you know we've noticed even working at the, at the at the board level when there is a sense of urgency because things are important mm -hmm. and you want things to be priorities and you want things to happen in a timely way and so that sense of urgency can kind of come in so what are ways that you deal with that when things do feel important and they do feel urgent and you want to balance that with this moving at the sense of at the at the, at the speed of trust yeah. how do you adjust how do you calibrate that i think again it's like um not always easy and i have to catch myself sometimes when i'm um succumbing to urgency and sometimes there is like there's very urgent things like um you know uh, a funder needs paperwork by five o'clock, you know, there's those kind of things. But then right. there's the, the larger picture of like, are we, are we actually building together for the long term, for the long haul? Like, are we actually creating the practices that will then take us into the next iteration of, of what we wanna be in the future? Um, and so I think it's all about also being organized for me, um, you know, having, having a scaffold for when we come together, really taking it seriously that people are contributing their time and really respecting that, respecting the energy and the time that people bring and trying to create the conditions where we can make the most of that um, together to build. And I think that that actually goes a long way in terms of um, tangible steps, tangible, tangible structures that we can build together that people are actually bought into. You know, I think it can take a little bit of time on the front end, but that's mostly, you know, the people planning, right? Like the intention that goes into it. Um, not just showing up and being like, okay, let's figure this out because we're really rushed. But like, no, I'm gonna take 20 minutes and I'm gonna really think this through and then I'm gonna ask for feedback and then we're gonna move, <laughs> you know? And it's not, it, that's actually not that much time when you think about the chaos that can ensue if people aren't on the same page, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so it's, for me, it's actually, a, it's actually a more, um, thoughtful use of time, weirdly enough, if that makes sense. No, it does. It's sort of that, you know, it reminds me of, you know, when you're young and somebody's talking to you about saving money and how they'll say, well, yeah, if you start saving a little bit at a time and you start doing it now, it's going to have a better payback later. Mm -hmm. So you're basically being just more fruitful and useful with, with a valuable resource, which is, which is people's time. Mm -hmm. And, and I love this, this whole, um, you didn't use this term, but I'll just use it is that very human centered right? Mm -hmm. Very human centered um, thoughtfulness in terms of how people are interacting and actually taking those moments when somebody on the team is might feel a sense of urgency or might feel a sense of chaos and and claiming it and looking at it and not just breezing through it, right? Mm -hmm. To get to the next agenda item or right. action right. item. And that's, that's an opportunity. That's an invitation to figure out, um, you know, how, how we're going to move based on what that person is, is bringing, right? And I think that brings me to like another aspect of it, which is like, how do we, how can we be, um, how can we disagree and have like generative um, conflict? You know, like how can we actually cultivate the space where that disagreement or difference of perspective can be embraced? And then we can get to the next place that's actually beyond like, where we, where either anybody is just in their own minds, right? Like, how do you actually create the building blocks to figure out where you're going to go next through that conflict? Um, right. And, you know, it's not necessarily a negative thing. 
No. And it's, and, and I think people understanding, I like that you use the word generative. I've heard the word constructive conflict, mm -hmm. but I also like the word generative because it feels like something, something more beyond just constructing, constructing something, something generates from that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I'm curious with what your experience has been as of late, you know, doing that, like creating that safe space so that people can be at different, at, have different opinions and hold different things to be true. Sure, sure. I just want to shout out really quick, Amy and Amber. Hi, friends from Oakland. Um, so um, your questions, I got distracted. Um, oh, no, that's you know, good. That's okay. If you've got, if we've got Oakland in the house. People I just spoke to, I've learned a lot from um, just through their facilitation practice, like so much more than I can even say. Um, but what I, I guess, for me, it's about facilitation. Um, it's about like, how are you um, holding the space together to, um, you know, in that way of like, okay, what are, what are our agreements about how we're gonna, we're gonna hold this space together? What are the values individually and collectively that we're bringing? Um, yes, Bay Area, San Francisco. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, and like, just in general, um, having a facilitated process where people can um, also learn in different ways from each other. So small group work, big group work, individual work, art making. For me, these all create the conditions where we can be like, yeah, I don't really agree with that. You know, and we can actually have a discourse um, versus, I mean, and it's one thing that I've learned from a lot of facilitators in my life, which is, um, you know, just having those different modalities opens up the door to people really sharing different perspectives um, and building from there. Um, and that's, that's really awesome. Oh, and we've got a, we've got a question from San mm -hmm. Fran. What does each person need to feel seen, heard and participate fully? Yeah. And so Amy coming through with the really great questions. Like I think that question also, um, would be one that you might pose at the beginning of time together. Aurora, I'm not, Aurora, can you hear me? Because I'm not hearing you all of a sudden. Can you hear me? Oh, now I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, now I can. Okay. For a second there, I couldn't hear you, Aurora. I don't know what happened on my end. So I don't, um, I guess what I was trying to say is like, just where it, one thing that I learned, and this is a lot of my, um, goes back to Destiny Art Center, where I worked for five years in Oakland, and I worked with Amy, who's in the chat, um, is, you know, about like, just making sure that there's that intention about every single person being seen, right? Like, especially mm -hmm. like, we talk about circles and opening and closing, and kind of like, how do you kind of create that, that practice and that opportunity? And also, I think, to the point where it becomes a muscle for everybody, where we're all looking for that. It's not just about, you know, the facilitator, but it's like a shared, a shared um, kind of understanding and value that yeah. everyone is, is cultivating together for each other. Well, one of the, yeah, and one of the things that I notice is when, when it does come down to the facilitation and having that opportunity to have space to think and then also space to listen, mm -hmm. because I do feel like the structure of stereotypical meetings, you are forced to think, digest, react, and, and, and then come up with something to add at the same time while other people are speaking. And it's really difficult to do that. And I think we've been um, misled in terms of how to communicate in a meeting if we're supposed to be doing all of those things effectively at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because how can you actually deeply listen if you're already plotting the next thing that you're going to say? And yet, if you don't have time to consider something that is an important consideration in the meeting, right? So giving, I feel like giving people time to connect with, understand what's going on, whether it's people doing that in advance of the meeting or having structured time within the, within the meeting, it allows people to really feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love, I love doing things um, as far as um, circle work mm -hmm. so that people get to speak, get to fully speak. They don't have to worry about 
in being interrupted and that type of thing, at least for particular parts of the meeting. And then maybe there are, you know, whenever right. is possible, not all people process information the same way. Exactly. Right. Like, so, like I, I just from the work that I do, Aurora, we've talked about this, like some people like need to go back and research and, and pull through content and, and look at things and reflect and other people have this gut instinct and want to act on it. Yeah. But it's always great to like have that time to pause before we go into the mm -hmm. reaction. One, one thing that I really love, um, just in terms of that, like offering everybody in the space opportunities to learn and fully invest um, is really thinking about playing with facilitation roles too. So, um, you know, I think that's when the funnest, like the most fun I've ever had, like in a meeting or in a retreat is when we're sharing, um, you know, we kind of get to huddle up with a group of people and plan it out. Um, and, and then, you know, it changes from your plan, of course, whenever you're doing it. Um, but I think, you know, being able to kind of trade off for me as a, as a facilitator, um, and just fully sink into the being facilitated and being held in that process is really, is really great. Um, and I think it's a, it's a neat strategy when you're working, um, with a large group and you actually have different people. And then you're also messing with like, power dynamics, which is always great. Um, and just thinking about how are ways that we're mixing up how the space is held. Um, yes, the container can be held by all participants. Um, yeah. And I think that that's kind of the ultimate goal, right? Is when we're um, organically moving to the space where that, it doesn't even feel like we have one, like a facilitator, or even a team of facilitators, it's actually moving to the shared, um, you know, energy that's happening. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's co-leadership. I mean, when you, when you stop and think about it, um, one of my questions, you know, is talking is it, it talks to people who may not necessarily be officially leading or officially managing a meeting or a team. And, and how can you, how can you show up? Well, everybody showing up as a leader and everybody showing up as a space holder is, so critical because I mean, think about it. If you're in a, say you're in a meeting of, of a handful of people or even 10 people and you feel like somebody is not there and not present, it, it's, it's like a leak in the ship. It does feel like that. And I think it's easy for us to focus on the particles, like on the agenda items, on what's necessary. And it's, and it's, more important for us to like focus on how are we holding the space because if we're holding the space in a sacred way in a respectful way with each other then even more can come up and and more can be played with right yeah and just that noticing right and not you know taking that in as information um yeah yeah well, and, and how do you notice, especially in the times that we are currently living, mm -hmm. times of pandemics and social justice and all the stress and strife that's going on in the world, um, this notion, we kind of touched on it um, in our emails, but just about having organizations having an opportunity to be a healing organization for the people that are within that organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious on your on your thoughts and how you've seen that manifest in organizations that you've worked for and worked with. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's critical <laughs> um, that everything that we do, especially when we're talking about, um, you know, spaces where we're where we're really talking about uplifting um, and partnering with young people to share their stories, um, that all of this work that we're talking about around healing. Um, I mean, around facilitation is our, you know, this is part of the practice, right? So I think critical is that whatever we're trying to create, co-create with young people, and that's the vantage point that I'm coming from, um, that we also do that with each other, right? So that we're, that we are fostering um, that same support system um, and centering of each other and, and every individual that we would with a group of young people. Um, and I think that the most profound organizations that I've had the privilege um, to work with and just 
witness <laughs> um, kind of cultivate that throughout its entire fabric. You know, um, it's not like that's just reserved for one part of who you are. No, we're our whole people and we're all actually asking in this work for people to show up that way. Right. And if we don't care for each other, we can't actually show up. So yeah. it feels like it's a barrier if you don't. And, and it's something you strive towards. It's not something, you know, I think that it's a practice. It's a process. It's also the systems and structures. It's, you know, time off to rest. It's boundaries. <laughs> it's knowing your role. It's a lot of things, right? Um, in addition to these practices that we're talking about. Um, so if that makes sense. It, do, it does make sense. And we'll get, there, there's a really yummy question in here. I, um, I, love, I, I love the concept of framing it up, especially because of our organization. Well, Free Spirit Media, obviously, we're working with youth. And so to take that learning of how we would work with youth and do that with each other is so inspiring to me because it adds another level of care. And it's very possible that, you know, in our professional lives elsewhere, for example, for the board, you know, we might operate at a, or be, or be positioned or forced to operate at a different speed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and under different circumstances. So given the opportunity to learn to communicate in a different way and operate in a different way is a, is a huge gift and a huge opportunity. And I do think that that has uh, a, an oppor it, I think it's also an opportunity for people who are serving on the board to heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. In terms of how they communicate. Yeah. Um, but I want to address this question. So the yeah. question, what are the essential conversations organizations should consider having between board and staff as we emerge into a changing world? Gosh, I want to know your answer to that question, Jill, <laughs> sometime. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, Melissa, do you want to take that just given that you're coming from the board vantage point? Well, yeah, I think we can both we can both take it from yeah. our different. You want to start, right? Okay, <laughs> I'll go for it. I'll, I'll, well, thank you, thank you, Aurora. Um, what I, I from the board, based on my board experience that I've been having recently, I crave more information and more contact and more insights from the staff, right? To really understand how things are operating what's working, what's not working, um, vision, value, all of that. I love that. And at the same time, I don't ever want the board to, f I don't ever want the staff to feel like the board is leading, right? And I think that in, um, in a way, I, I want, I'm trying to make sure that this comes through, that this is coming through in the right way. Like the organization, particularly our organization, is really about the youth voices, right? So I want that to lead the discussion. I want that to lead the organization, right? And I want the board to be able to bring our expertise, our resources, our energy to support that vision. And I want us to understand how things are going vis-a-vis -vis the staff, and I think that what may, um, what can be possible in other organizations is that that might feel like the board is leading, but it's not the board. Like too much convert, too much, um, too much conversation from the board might feel micromanagey or overwhelming or something like that. And that's not what I mean. What I mean is just to have that open flow of communication, mm -hmm. and with the staff leading. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think I would build on that to um, add that um, I think that these of uh, these times when we can come together and really understand um, our shared values that drive the, the reason we're all part of this work is really critical. Um, I think that having brave conversations um, about things that haven't worked or, um, you know, and how we're going to move forward um, and kind of cultivating um, again, the sense of, of um, process and accountability um, in all directions is really critical uh, right now. And, um, you know, I think that every opportunity, like at Free Spirit Media, we're going to be going through a lot of processes. Um, we have, you know, been engaging in a lot of internal work um, with each other and will do, be doing this, I mean, at least for the next 
we will be doing this forever, <laughs> but also for the next year, at least very intensively. And I think that board um, being engaged in that is very important because we yeah. can't be building two different visions um, in two different directions, <laughs> um, you know, simultaneously. And really that has to be unified. And one of the things that I really strive for is that I try to um, really think about how am I talking and embodying the work um, across all stakeholders in, in the same way. Um, that I'm not actually switching it up. Like, I really strive to do that. So, um, you know, just in thinking about how do we talk about the work? How do we embody the work? Um, how do we uplift the work? How do we change the way we do things if they don't feel like, if it feels like, um, you know, the structures are inequitable? Like, how do we actually yeah. mess with that and um, rebuild? Um, I think those are all things that, um, you know, organizations need to be considering right now, board, yeah. staff, every, you know, across the board. Because yeah. things were built in a very different time. <laughs> a lot of these organizations um, were built in a different time and a different light. And so it's all about like, how are we being responsive to now? Yeah. It's and like the, people. yeah. And the, and the visual, oh, we've got a bunch of, um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to see if there were there. It looked like there might've been other questions and I'm trying to scan them. But um, one of the things that I love about how you're describing it, Aurora, is that I'm almost picturing like a very old time, like box structure of how things were built. Right. And what we're looking at now is much more um, three dimensional, much more like a geodesic dome <laughs> than yeah. it, right, because it is across, you know, that's actually one of the tenets of conscious capitalism. And even though we're talking about a nonprofit, it's a similar thing where you're looking across all stakeholders. So when when we're talking about teamwork, we're actually talking about, OK, the staff, we're talking about participants, we're talking about the board, we're talking about our, the community that we live in and serve, we talk, we're talking about funders, donors, like it's an entire, it's a really, um, it's, it's, a, it's an environment, it's a web, it's, a, it's, a, it's much more than just a team, it really is a community. And so these, these skills and these practices that we're bringing forth or that we're embodying, it's an opportunity to have that spread into the larger community. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanna uplift what um, Amy said, making no assumptions about values and vision is key with board. Then moving with trust. How can boards trust the implementation of the staff and stewards, staff slash stewards? Yeah, and I love that idea of, of stewardship as well. Um, and just thinking, you know, very much thinking of that's, you know, when I think of staff, that is that is our roles, right? Like we're stewards of this work. Um, and there's a long lineage and yeah, of people who have been been holding this. Um, yeah. So across all these different organizations. Yeah, I feel like the, the, the value of curiosity and discovery is an important value to hold in that process so that the so that nobody thinks that they that they know. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you can have an internal knowing or value that you hold that's separate from knowing that a thing is supposed to work a certain way. So having that space, once again, all of this points back to what you said at the very beginning of our talk, which is the container, like looking at how you're holding the space, mm -hmm. because the what we're holding in the space may be and will be evolving and changing. Yeah. So if that container of trust is there, then, you know, mm -hmm. the pasta can cook and yes. the water can boil. And the <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So do you think there's any, um, aside from the things that we've covered, are there any like secret ingredients to building, um, to, to support people in deep listening? Like, I don't, I think we're in a, we're in a time where people have so many things to do and attention is scattered. So to build that skill of deep listening and encourage that in the organization, is there anything that you've noticed that works really well to build deep listening? Gosh, everything comes back to the facilitation for me. But um, I would say one thing, um, you know, in my role to add to that is just modeling that. 
um, presence. And I think it's also a key component to to building a shared vision and, and trust with each other. Um, but there's, there, you know, I think not having that sense of urgency, slowing things down, being intentional, um, seeing each other, listening to each other. I mean, these are all connected um, as is like, you know, being heard. So I think as a, as someone, you know, who occupies um, the role that I occupy, I spend a lot of my time thinking about positional power dynamics. <laughs> so how am I um, stepping back? How am I just, you know, just all the ways that I can, you know, how am I just being really mindful? And I'm sure I, I mess up all the time, you know, about how I am, I am embodying this role, you know, um, and making, making sure I notice too, when people become silent and it feels like, mm, maybe that wasn't actually, that there's something to learn there <laughs> to listen in on. Um, and I think that part of it, you know, it's like that cultivation of, of, of the community and of, of mutual respect too, that makes it so that people can actually share something that, you know, authentically too, right? Yeah. Um, so it takes, it takes both. But I think that the, the observation of how um, positional power dynamics are existing in the space is really critical too, to like even, even having a, an opportunity to listen or to hear or to reflect. Um, yeah. And also just how I model that with, yeah. in my relationships. Yeah, it's it's interesting when I talk to certain team leaders that are clients of mine. Oftentimes, like, well, I I offer up to the to to the team, like, what do they what do they think? What do they? I'm like, well, who talks first? Like, are you mm -hmm. are you actually talking first and then asking what people think? Because that's going to change the conversation, mm -hmm. and and people won't necessarily share if the person that's in the position of of, of power is the one that's leading the conversation as opposed to sharing in the conversation and, and, and holding the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I do think it's a, uh, it's a new skill. It's, it's, it's a, it's a new skill. I also think that once somebody feels really heard that they want to give that gift to other people, mm -hmm. right. And they, that, that it becomes more of a, of a value. And so mm -hmm. there is that moment of, like you said, that like that person that might not want to share that goes silent, right. When actually they really want to speak more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, when they feel that safety um, that's helpful. And also looking at that container again, acknowledging what is in the container. So if something does come up, you know, you use their, you know, nobody's perfect. So if, if we, if we have an unintentional com an unintentional impact or unconscious impact when it becomes conscious and people realize wow didn't realize that okay let's acknowledge that and honor it just just to acknowledge it in the space yeah. so that it's not because there's nothing worse than having like all of these little itty bitty like micro elephants all over the room yeah in yeah and i mean that you strike on a good point because i think if it feels like things have to be perfect too like that, that perfectionism culture, then that also makes it so that people don't feel like they can say anything, right? And so yes. um, I think it's also like, how are you creating the conditions where people can dissent or have to, you know, not agree? Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's important. Otherwise, you know, people will be silent because it's like, it's not really a space for that, right? Right. Um, it's not a space to even speak your mind. So that those those signals come in loud and clear. Um, I think oftentimes based on positional power dynamics in the room, um, like you said, who speaks first. So yeah, yeah. I think there are lots of like that whole notion of getting things right or perfectionism. I mean, I think that I. I'm a recovering perfectionist myself and, and it's out of a good intention of wanting to do right and wanting to do well and add value and all of that, but it can become crippling. And so to have the focus be more on how do I want to show up? Like, mm -hmm. what do I want to call forth? How do I want to be authentic? Right. Those types of, those types of things can lead towards 
adding value and, mm -hmm. and bringing goodness and all the things that you want without yeah. the trappings of the having to get it right or the perfectionism. Absolutely. All the brilliant facilitators are for some reason on this call today. Hi, Anna, Luera. <laughs> um, but yeah. Have to say the happy. team, that your, your, that. your team. <laughs> well, it, you know, I so appreciate your time today. I know it's a crazy week for you, Aurora. Is there anything that you wanted to add that you feel like you didn't get to, to share so far? Just, um, I think I talked a lot about facilitation. Um, and I mentioned that um, I have a lot of teachers of facilitation. Um, some of them are on this call. <laughs> And um, just wanna, um, and I'm learning all the time. So I just wanna like appreciate um, just the gift that that different people in my life have um, offered me in terms of leading um, spaces in a way that I could learn from um, and be part of. And so I think that that's just always what I'm trying to play to to cultivate um, because it's been so life changing for me um, personally on a personal level. It's personal work. Um, and so, yeah, just very grateful, um, to the wisdom of mentors, <laughs> some of whom are on this call. So I have to say that. Yay for mentors. Yeah. Yes. I'm so, aren't we so lucky? Aren't we so lucky to have, yeah, mm -hmm. teachers and mentors and are, are, are the thing always learning, always learning. Um, well, Thank you so much for your time, for sharing, thank and, and thank you for all of the amazing work that you do with Free Spirit Media. I, I just want to throw it out there to <laughs> the folks at home that are listening. If, if you don't know about Free Spirit Media, it is such a beautiful organization, and you can tell that it's led with love and heart and um, by the wonderful Aurora. And so if you want to find out more about it, you know, I will put the link, follow Free Spirit Media. It's, a, it's an inspiring organization to be yeah. involved with and be aware of. So we'll make sure that they're tagged and that you can check out the website if you want to get involved or if you want to learn more, you can reach out to myself or to Aurora. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very generative organization that is doing yeah. great work in healing communities. Yes. Amazing, amazing people work here, amazing young people. So, yes. Thank you, Melissa. Thank oh, you thanks, time. Aurora. You have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Okay. And thank you again for your generous time. Okay, you too. Take care, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.